Yup, that's me. You're probably wondering what I'm building now, and I don't blame you. It almost seems like every week there's a new project here at Paradise Savior. In order for you to understand what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, we would have to start from the beginning. So sit back, grab your favorite snack, and relax, because this story might get a little bit long. I was born October 6, 1989. What? Are you serious? That's where you want to start? No, no, come on, speed it up. How about we start maybe in 2009 when you started to work with birds? These people have places to be and other videos to watch. Come on, this video is getting too long. Hurry it up. Okay, okay. I guess we'll start in 2009. For those that don't know me, 2009 was the year when I fell in love with these birds. These small colorful finches captivated me. There were so many species available at that time that it made it hard for me to focus on just one. So I did what any bird addict would have done. I purchased as many different species as I possibly could. And that was only the beginning. Over the years, I have worked with countless species of finches, too many to list to be honest. And although it has been amazing to see the growth over the years and the success that I've had at establishing certain species, I've always felt like something was missing. You know, one of my best attributes is my determination. Now mix that with one of my worst, which is my impulsive behavior, and we have a recipe for excitement. Okay, I'm sorry. Did you just say that your impulsive behavior was exciting? Because I don't find any of this exciting. Do you want to tell them about this impulse buy where we got lovebird sized nest boxes because we didn't check the measurements on them before pre-ordering? Um, I don't know about that. Let's try to stay on topic. We'll leave that mistake for another video. Where was I? Oh yes. Okay. Determination plus impulse equals excitement. And this year so far has been filled with excitement, but it's not always like that. See, my breeding season for the finches runs October to March. During these months, I'm filled with joy, doing what I love the most. But once March arrives, the season ends and the birds are placed in the outdoor aviary to rest until the following season. As you can imagine, this leaves me with a lot of time on my hands. And when I'm bored, my mind wanders off and the ideas just start coming in, and the impulse usually starts to take over. And that's exactly what happened this year after cleaning the bird room. The first species I bought were the hooded parakeets. These are a medium-sized parrot measuring up to 26 centimeters long and weighing up to 50 to 60 grams. As you can imagine, due to its smaller size, they fit well in the four foot long cages. So up until that point, I really thought the bird room would work great for the parrots. My plan was simple, breed finches from October to March. Then once all of the finches were taken out to the outdoor aviary, bring in the parrots and breed those from March to July. Boy, was I wrong. My first problem came in the form of the plumhead parakeets. These birds were noticeably bigger than the hooded parrots, twice the size in fact, measuring up to 55 centimeters long from beak to tail. I knew right away after placing them in the cages that it just wouldn't work out. So as you can imagine, once I saw this, my impulse behavior took over and boom, now we're building a new parrot enclosure and set of cages for all of the new birds. Here behind me, we have the different sizes of rolls that I'm using to build these cages. Starting all the way at the end, we have the two foot rolls. Here we have the three foot rolls. And then last but not least, we have the four foot rolls. All right, now I'm gonna go get the skid steer to load these up and take them to the section where we are cutting them because these rolls are just too heavy to carry by hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting all of these rolls. I like to cut as many as I possibly can. You, ideally, one roll at a time. These rolls are uh, 100 feet long. So I'm gonna cut the whole entire roll first. And then after all the parts have been cut, after this has been cut into six foot long pieces, this has been cut into six foot long pieces, and that one has been cut into six foot, foot long pieces, then I'll go ahead and I will start assembling the cages. I found it, it makes it a little bit easier to pre-cut all the mesh first and then assemble. Let's get to work. Forgot one last thing. Eye protection. Let me go get that. 
All right. Now we could get to work. Now this tends to get a little bit of time consuming because every time that you cut the mesh to six feet long, you have these little spikes from the previous cut that you have to grind down or cut out. And that's one of the things that takes the longest time, just making sure that you take care of all these little edges so that you don't poke yourself once the cages are being built. Okay, so here we have the mesh already pre-cut to six feet long. We have the three foot one, the two foot one, and the front and backs of the cage. The two foot one is gonna be for the floor and the roof, like I mentioned, and then this is for the side panel. So let's go start assembling one of these cages so you can see what it looks like when you assemble it. Assembling these cages is not difficult, but it is time consuming. Assuming that you already have all of your pieces pre-cut to the size that you need these cages to be built at, you're going to start to assemble it on the floor as I'm doing here. You're going to obviously need the roof, the bottom of the floor, the two side walls, and then the front and back panels. Once you align it all on the floor, you're going to start clamping it together with either hog rings or J clips. Personally, I went with the J clips because I felt like it would secure the cages a little bit better. Once you get all the corners clamped together, you're able to fold it up into the shape of a square or the natural shape of the cage that you wanted to give it. And then you can continuously go around all the edges, adding as many J clips as you possibly can to make it as secure and stable as possible. On average, it takes around 30 minutes to build one cage, assuming that all of the pieces have already been pre-cut. So as you can see, this is something that will take some time to finish in order for me to meet my 30 cage goal that I need for that new parrot enclosure. And this is where we're gonna put that parrot enclosure. It's gonna measure 12 feet wide by 35 foot long. One of the things that we have been focusing here on lately is elevating the terrain just to make sure that it sits a bit higher than the terrain all around it so that when it does rain, it doesn't get flooded or there is no water retention underneath of the cages creating a humid environment. That is something that the birds do not like and we are trying to avoid that. But in this video, we're not gonna focus on this. This is something that I'll be able to show you guys in next week's video. Like always, I hope that you've enjoyed this one. If you did, remember to hit a thumbs up, like and subscribe, and we'll see each other in the next one. Bye.